Hey, what's going on guys? Matt back here with another tutorial and today we're going to be looking at how authoritative servers work. So I'm bringing out another tutorial which is going to explain how the programming works for this scene. However, I want to explain the way that it works in a bit more detail. Basically, when you look at a multiplayer game and you have a certain amount of players, say like four players, in a game at once, you don't ideally want to have each player sending all of its game to everybody all the time. You only want there to really actually be one game running and everybody else is technically just watching that game and that's what the authoritative server does because if you're not using an authoritative server like my other tutorial on networking what happens is if you've got a four player game everybody's running four versions of the game all doing physics updates, movement updates, animations, textures, everything. However, if you're doing it using an authoritative server, then there's only actually one version of the game and it's just updating the positions rather than necessarily physics movements and all that kind of stuff. What that is, is it will be the server that runs that and then sends all the information to everybody else. So the way I've got it set up at the moment is if I just make the uh, editor the server, I can just hit play and I'll name it the game. I can start the server and I join the game. And then if I find servers on this client version, I can join the game and I jump on top of this other guy. As, as the server, if I move from side to side, what I'm actually doing is I'm moving myself and then I'm telling this client here, the, uh, the, the other one that's joined into the game, my position. I'm moving based on physics though, but I'm telling it just the position because it only needs to know whereabouts I am in the world and obviously rotations and stuff like that also count. But as the client, if I move, what I'm actually doing is I'm saying, I've pressed this button and it's gonna change these numbers. And then I ask the server, I send an RPC to the server and say, can I? Can you please move me on the game? And then tell me where I end up. And so what happens is the server then updates it and then sends it back to the client almost instantly. So that kind of covers when you're actually in the game but while it's setting up one of the biggest issues that you normally have is being able to work out who who's going to be watching what camera because effectively all it is there's one game playing and anybody else that joins the game is just watching it and yelling yelling commands to the server what actually happens is when the server creates itself it creates itself and then tells the clients later on when they join it remembers what's what's happened and it says this stuff's happened update yourselves However, when a client joins, they request to be made by the server. They store their own network player, which is a unique number to that player, to that client. So what they do from there is they store their player. They send make player to the server, basically. They say, server, can you make a player? And then what the server does is it creates that player. It stores the object that it created, which would then have a network view attached to it. And what a network view does is it allows you to be able to send stuff from one to the other, depending on how you use them, because what you can do with the players, I've got the network views turned, their, their state synchronization is turned off. And what that means is it's never watching that player in somebody else's game, because it doesn't need to if you're using an authoritative server, because the server is telling everyone what to watch and how to watch it, and everything else is moving based on what they tell them, rather than watching them themselves and causing extra extra load on the communication between between clients and servers. So once you've requested to be made, it will create the server will create it and then store it. If it's a client that requested it, then we're going to send them the view ID of the of the player that we just made, which is the network view view ID, because that's a unique number to that object that was created. So this object's got its own unique number and then we send it to the unique player and then we say enable camera because we need to enable that camera only for that player. So once we send it through, we what we do is we store all of the players and then we, um, for each of the players, we need to check whether their ID matches. And if the ID matches with the ID that we just created, then we're going to tell the players, the player that its movement needs to have control because then is allowed to request for, to be moved, like I've mentioned earlier. And then it will tell, it will get, get hold of the camera inside that object and it will tell it to be enabled and also to be able to listen to audio as well. And then it will just break the for loop. So basically what it does is the client joins the game, requests the server to create them a, a player. And then the server tells them, I've created a player and the camera that's attached to that is your camera. So you need to watch that. And everything else that happens is basically the clients request stuff over the RPCs to the server. And then the server updates everybody else with the, just the position rather than the actual physics velocity and all that kind of stuff. So I hope that kind of explains it a bit. 
the network views are only really useful to be able to actually send things over once you use once you're using an authoritative server you don't actually need to have the state synchronization on because you don't need to watch anything that's really the difference between the the multiplayer that i created before and the authoritative server multiplayer that i'm going to be covering in the tutorial alongside this video so i hope that's useful and i'll see you next time mm -hmm.